morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness that he is full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, you pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Excuse me, we'll, we'll admit that. Okay. Let us pray. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no tempest may disturb us, for you have set us fast on the rock of the Apostle Peter's confession of faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you, as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ, and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed, tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant <clears throat> pastures, he gives me repose. <clears throat> Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, 
When she went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Today the church celebrates the chair of St. Peter. In fact, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome behind the main altar is a huge chair of bronze or gold. <clears throat> it stands for Peter's role and authority as the chief pastor of Christ's church. We know who Peter was, one of the 12 apostles, whom Jesus chose. Like his brother Andrew, he left everything to follow Jesus. The Gospels tell us more about him than of any of the other apostles. His personality is more defined than he is that of the others. We come to know Peter as rugged, honest, impetuous, and sincere. He's always mentioned first every time the apostles are mentioned. Through the Gospels, we can see Peter's faith growing and developing. <clears throat> the Gospels relate some of the important dialogues between Jesus and Peter. First, and I tell you, you are Peter, you are rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. So Peter will be the foundation stone for the new community that Jesus is establishing. <clears throat> Secondly, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whenever I've gone to a new parish and the previous pastor was leaving, he always gave me the keys so I knew I was in charge. I had the authority as the pastor. I also had the checkbook. <laughs> Jesus tells Peter, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Years ago when the Pope visited Denver, a headline in the newspaper read, <clears throat> excuse me, U.S. Catholics are often at odds with the Pope. The article was reporting on many Catholics are what we often call sometimes cafeteria Catholics. In other words, they pick and choose what they will believe and practice. Next to that headline was a question from a Catholic man in Chicago who stated, we used to call people like that Protestants. Before the 11th and 16th centuries, everyone who claimed to be a Christian accepted the fact that the Bishop of Rome is Peter's successor and shepherd of the whole church, the Church of Christ. In the 11th century, some Eastern Christians, the Orthodox, broke away. We know them as the Eastern Christians. In the 16th century, we had the Protestant Reformation. What distinguishes us as Catholics today is that we accept or should accept the authority of the Bishop of Rome, who is the Pope. Some Protestant churches today recognize that the Pope plays an important role as a moral teacher. So again, what is the Pope's main function? When we say he's the Bishop of Rome, we're saying he's the Bishop of the diocese throughout the world. His main function is to preserve and protect the unity of the flock of Christ. All the other bishops represent him in their local dioceses. 
In every celebration of the Eucharist, we always pray for our Holy Father and our local bishop that they will always remain a sign of unity. We pray that his successor, Peter, will guide his people on the right path. Back in the fourth century, St. Jerome remarked, I follow no leader except Christ, so I consult the chair of Peter, for this I know is the rock upon which the church is built. So we pray that we will be humble and obedient in accepting the Holy Father's authority, remembering the source of his authority comes from Jesus himself. You have thoughts or different in scripture today? confidence in God's mercy, we present our needs and those of the world to our loving Father. For the gift of unity in the church, that God's laws of love and forgiveness may be in our minds and written upon our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. <clears throat> For peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world, <clears throat> we pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, and for those in special need of prayer, that Jesus may restore what is withered in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, that they may find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joseph, Mercurio, and Buck Bauer, whom we remember in a special way during this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray, loving Father, we offer all these prayers to your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. In the midst of this water and wine, may you come to share in divinity Christ, humble himself to share in our humanity. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit, kind our heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Extend with favor, O Lord, we pray the prayers and offerings of your church, that with St. Peter as her shepherd, she may come to an eternal inheritance, for it is through his teaching that she holds the faith in its integrity through Christ our Lord. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those who have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed unto willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, <clears throat> giving thanks that you held us worthy <clears throat> to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. <coughs> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection or who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <clears throat> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. We sing your body and blood of Jesus Christ and our burning judgment and condemnation, which we are loving most with Christ and our body and the blood of God. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By Christ, you save eternal life.
let us pray. O oh God, who at our celebration on the feast day of the blessed apostle Peter, have nourished us by communion in the body and blood of Christ, grant we pray that this redeeming exchange may be for us a sacrament of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as then, let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, weeping, and valley tears. Turn and most grace to advocate the eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Carmen, O love, and O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.